This is The Three Gun Show, episode 65, with Andy Peterson, Craig Outson, and Brian Nelson on location at the Tactical Performance Center. This episode is brought to you by MGM Targets. Setting industry standards and quality and innovation for over 20 years, MGM Targets has grown to be the most well-known brand of steel targets worldwide. The code DHMGM10 will save you 10% on your purchase. MGM Targets, leave nothing to chance. Now, we talk about a lot of cool stuff in this uh, episode, so make sure to check out the links to everything we discuss at 3 slash episode 65. And now, please join me in welcoming back to the show... Andy Peterson, Craig Outson, and Brian Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome to the Three Gun Show, live from uh, the Tactical Performance Center in St. George, Utah. I am here with uh, the three instructors of a multi-gun boot camp that we uh, that we just got done with, and we're going to do like a little bit of a, a cl- after class AAR type of thing, and uh, hopefully get out of here. So. Andy can get some uh, food in his belly. And speaking of Andy, I, Andy, welcome to the show, man. Thanks, Dave. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> also sitting with us is um, Brian Nelson. Brian, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm not sure if I can top that. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 tough. Uh, engaging is what I would call it. Yeah, absolutely. All just, right, I, I'm it's drawn. Just a, it's just to a simple, no polite more. response. That's all it is. <laughs> And, uh, of course, uh, back for more, Craig Outson. How you doing, man? Very well, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show again. So uh, very polite. I think we're off to a great start here, guys. And uh, I think we're a little bit goofy after three days out in the desert doing a lot of shooting. A lot of – you guys did a lot of teaching. I did a lot of learning. So from, uh, from your guys' perspective, you've got to be, like, burnt out. I, like, I understand how it is to be – like Andy's about to fall asleep. No, I'll, I'll tell you, I take classes all the time, and people, the instructors will say, "Man, we got to really get off the range, that kind of thing." Mm-hmm. And I'm always wanting to stay longer and do extra shooting and extra reps and everything. I am burnt out. Yes, I'm done. I mean, well, l- let's let's talk raw numbers. Three days, right? There were 72 hours in three days. Right. We were on the range for 36 of those. Jesus. Um, if you when really, you really, like if, if you, really wanna, if you yeah. really want to count down the numbers, that's just the raw numbers. Um, that's not the extra few hours a night that we were, you know, honestly, you know, scrambling and, and making some adjustments. This being our first like full blown class, uh, Brian and I had a long day Thursday setting up the range. We had about twelve hours out here setting yep. it up, building props. Um, I know Brian and the other staff, Sam and, and Dave, were out here Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday setting targets for this class. I had to work. Sorry. So, yeah, a- Andy I so had something about work. Got yeah. like a real job. <laughs> sorry about that. But uh, anyway, you know, there's been a lot of hours, and, and just in the three days of class, not only were we at the range for 36 of it, um, and teaching, but there was a lot of things. We had a lot of we had a lot of balls in the air that we were juggling, sure. just trying to trying to keep everything going balls. on the backside. Well, and, and uh, man, yeah, I'm smoked. Yeah, just yeah. just thinking about the mental kind of fatigue when you're a student you have to worry about yourself and all the things you're doing when you're an instructor we had 15 15 16 people here 16 16 Mm -hmm. people here i'm already you've got 16 people that you're kind of worrying about okay what does he need to do to get better what does he need to do what does he need to do Mm -hmm. i'm worried about all these different people as well and i love it i love watching guys get better but it's you know it's just a lot to be dealing with and thinking oh yeah especially when you've got a small mind and there's something to be (laughs) and there's something to being um like on right where you've got to you know, some guys like I got a problem with my trigger. I'm going. <laughs> I've got you know this problem with my shotgun or or whatever it is. Hypothetical. Hypothetical. Hypothetically, yeah. I, I, I'm not, not, not speaking like about me. I'm, Every I'm, time I pull the trigger, it's, it's not always about me, guys. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> but um, but you have to be there to listen. To like I'm tired. I'm hungry. When are we doing this? You know, you're like, you know, den mother slash instructor as well. So there's a lot of wrangling that goes along with it. Plus, you have to be energetic and get people into it and demonstrate stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it, there's a, there's a weird factor of like being on, you know, when, uh, and, and it tires you out, even though you're not physically doing anything. 
the one example I can think of is during our weapon transition section, right? Which is a big hit with all the students. One of the one of the highlights probably over the three days. Mm -hmm. Some some you know you don't you're not shooting all the time. You have you have some time off as a shooter. Well, we are going a hundred percent, right? What is what is Nothing. this? Nothing. I was just I was just joking. I, I was think, getting tired. I think Craig's falling asleep. <laughs> well, take take <laughs> some you. caffeine. No, no, no. Get him some Enduro. Sorry. Weapon, yeah. we some weapons, Yeti. weapons, some transitions, ox. Andy. And the the point, Craig, is <laughs> that uh, as an instructor, you know, we're hit we're hitting student after student after student. We yes. can't turn off for that whole block. Right. And it is it is mentally fatiguing. Yeah. Right. Not physically, but man, it is draining. It it it. it you're trying to pick up on students' personalities in a couple of days because some students you can communicate very clearly with. Some students need a little bit more of a cajole type approach to them. Um, you'll always have. Uh, I, I was talking to you earlier about as much teaching as I've done over my lifetime. Classes never change. All the people coming to them change, but the characters are all the same. You have the same characters. You have the one guy, regardless of whether we're doing fire drills or whatever, teaching fire stuff or, or gun drills, teaching gun stuff. Who the the drill's been explained. It gets explained again. He's watched the drill be performed. He stood in line. He's waited for his turn to perform the drill. And then he comes up and he goes, now what was a drill? <laughs> <laughs> and as an instructor, it's frustrating. But you, you, you take that, you know, you, you might be frustrated. You might be at the end of the day. You haven't, you know, you haven't had anything to eat for six hours. Uh, you're totally in Roseanne Snickers territory of being angry. And um, you, you have to remember that that's your guy who has to hear that. He has to hear the instructions before he does it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the visual of seeing somebody doing it. It wasn't him actually doing it already one iteration through. He has to come up and have that reassurance that that's what the drill is. And so, like you said, you've always got to be turned on. You've always got to be cued into those people. And it is, it's, it's fatiguing. And we're, we're, you know, we've got the big goal of just teaching the drill or teaching the, the, the concept. And then you've also got to have this whole other part of you that is, tuning into those personalities and turning into how you how you talk to that student and get that teaching across and that's how you be be effective so you, we all want to be effective we all want to put out a good product and at the end of the day man sometimes you just you just sit down and you you don't look at anything that, that's what i was kind of giving andy a, a, a snooze there for a second because sometimes you sit there and you look at a white wall and you're just like wow <laughs> this, is gonna, nice. <laughs> this is nice this is nice I'm just going to look at that seam on the wall where we've got kind of the whiteboard paint and the not whiteboard paint. I'm just going to look here for a minute. <laughs> and it feels good. <laughs> and, and that's all I got, right? Yeah. I, I, you have nothing more. You're just gassed. And, um, <laughs> Dude, that's how I felt after uh, the third day of shot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shot that shot show does that every year. Um, you know, so, sometimes even matches will do that if you get yeah. a match that's where you're seeing a lot of people. I, I know Pro-Am is because there's, there's so many people there and – and uh, you, you've got some sponsors there. There tends to be a little bit more sponsor activity there. And you can get away from that at the end of the day. Um, something like the old uh, uh, FMG's uh, deal, uh, shoot, Shooting Industry Masters, right, where there's a lot of activity going on. And you're just at the end of the day, you just want to sit out. Just nothing more to do. I yeah. just want to sit here. I don't want to go to dinner. I don't want to talk to anyone. just want, kind of want to sit down. No, you can sit there if you want. You can sit right next to me if you want, but shh. Yeah. <laughs> Right. This, this is my time. <laughs> <laughs> no TV. Don't move. Don't rustle the pillow. Don't move the blanket. No, just ah. Uh, well, now, now you you guys said that you did uh, that. This is the first big class that you've done together. But there was a there was a first one that was like sort of a beta test, trying to figure it out. Andy, you were talking about it earlier um, about the things that you learned from that class and what you incorporated in, into uh, this one. What what do you think went better about this class than that first one? Well, I mean, that was our trial run, and we, we got some good ideas out there, um, got some good feedback from students. But then, like, Craig and I live a little closer to each other up in the Salt Lake City area, so we actually went out, uh, got some coffee a few days, and just talked it over, right? Really broke down the, the classes, what went well, what didn't. We made some big changes and kind of streamlined some things, uh, you know, the, the best of our ability, and uh, took a little bit more ownership of the curriculum, and I think it paid off, I mean, you know. Um, yeah, real quickly to like give you the short list of things that were better was everything. Um, not that that first beta class was, wasn't, wasn't good. Um, w none of us had taught together before hmm. we hadn't, we didn't really have any time to schedule. We had uh, very little time to set even time blocks for the class. And so 
students went away happy. We did, we did some good drills. We got, we, we taught some people some things that they didn't know and, and definitely improved everybody's shooting a little bit. But, um, you know, it was a lot of work for us and, and, and not really around that. And once we sat down and kind of broke down, we, we had to start with just what's the philosophy? What's our, what are we, what's the principle of our class? Because mm-hmm. there's so many subjects and so much to teach. And um, you and I discussed this yesterday. If, if we wanted to start a pistol class, right, we can go to any, any number of outlets across the country and take 50 pistol classes this year, one a week, and come back and develop a pistol class and have a whole book of drills and know what's effective and know what's not and all this kind of thing. And where do we go for this? There, there's not a three-gun camp training school somewhere because right. nobody's doing it. And so we were kind of pulling some stuff out of the air. Um, we knew what we wanted to do and how we wanted to address that. But everything was better about this. We had a plan. We had a schedule. Um, we had students who were invested in it. Uh, the first students were invited, um, and, and, and we, you know, we brought them in because of their feedback and their ability to give us feedback. But um, there, was a, there was more on the line. We had a lot of skin in the game. We had paying students this time. They'd invested money, not only in the class, they'd invested money traveling and staying, uh, food, all their ammo and, and guns and things. <clears throat> so a lot on the line, and we knew we had to, to make that pretty good. So we we put a lot more time in it, an effort. I don't know how many hours total. Uh, I guess we could convert that. I, I try not to think about that. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, even even the times we didn't meet, you know, I've, I've been thinking about this basically since the beta. Like, you think you think about a pistol course, you know, but then you think about three gun, right? So a draw block turns into three draw blocks because you got three guns, right? Yeah. Reloads turn into three reload blocks, and then the, the transitions between all the guns. It gets so broad and vast, all the skill sets that you have to go over and teach. And essentially, a three day class is really a two day class as far as teaching the components because that third day is kind of that integration day where everything starts to come together. We're working on stages or parts of stages. So you really have to do the whole sport in two days. Yeah. And how do you prioritize that, right? Where's the biggest payoff? What's the biggest bang for the buck for the students? And it takes a lot of thought and effort. The first time we sat down and met, we we sat there and we were like, okay, let's make a list of all the things we want to teach. And and the list got pretty long pretty quick, and we kind of looked at that and go, okay, this isn't going to work. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're not going to be able to just make a list and pick things from it. That's not going to work. So we had to kind of come up with a a little bit broader framework. What what we kind of came up with was uh, at first you start focusing on, well, this is the stuff we see in matches. This is – these are the tools we need in this toolbox, right? Then it ended up, wow, that's a lot of stuff. So what we we then – went away from was the tools in the toolbox we just start focusing on principles uh, when we talked about mechanics we talked about how to set up your stance and grip with a rifle with a pistol with a shotgun when we talked about supportive positions we didn't just haul out a bunch of random barricades we talked about how to build a supported position with a rifle whether that's supported standing kneeling um, an offhand position prone and then we right. showed you how to apply that to something that was maybe different we can't show you every weird rickety prop in three gun, but when you see one now, you know the principles to right, build up. Right. And, and, and we tied that back to the mechanics. So the yeah. mechanics led to a position. We show you how to build a position for the me- to make the mechanics work, all those <coughs> kinds of things. And, and we really just tried to keep that path of, of being principled through the class, and that that really helped us shave off a lot of things that you know would be great in a class, but really focus on something so a student could come in. Um, they might come in varying skill sets, but they can come in and learn those principles and go home with an ability to correct what they're doing, to teach themselves something new, and actually have, instead of tools in the toolkit, we gave them kind of the ability to build their toolkit or yep. what tools to look for, how to evaluate tools that they may want to put in their toolkit. And um, that, that took a lot of load off of what we had to teach and then kind of focused us on what we wanted to include in the class. Yeah, it's, it's a how-to manual essentially, right? And the biggest overview is like if if a student can take home, okay, I know exactly what I need to do to be to get to that next level or even at the championship level. You know, I've got the book. The work is going to be done at home. We don't have time to go through that amount of work and master yeah. these skill sets, but at least they know what they are and how to get better. They've got the tool, and now it's up to them, right? And that's that's about as good as we can do is communicate the tools and then turn it over to the students at home. So then uh, what is it 
overall that you would hope like the, a student takes away from from this class and goes and incorporates into their uh, their practice or their their match uh, performance? I, I would hope they take away the fact that one, there's a little bit more streamlined process for them to to get better, and two, we've now taught them what it is that will make them better. We've taught them something to practice that will help with that principle. And then we've taught them an evaluation tool to see if it's working. And hopefully they can use those things in conjunction con as a continual loop to keep that process of learning going forward. Um, that was that was really our goal at trying to make that happen. So hopefully that they take that away and know that that control is within themselves. If they'll be disciplined in their practice, they'll be disciplined in their evaluation of their practice, they'll see areas to improve and they'll see ways to improve it. And when you come to classes like this, you know, and you're learning from a pro, and I've been there too, I've been, and if I wasn't teaching, I would be taking the class from these guys too. Uh, you know, I'm constantly learning and trying to get to that next level. You know, as I've been in classes and looking at these guys, the thing that I notice is there is something different about these people, right? These competitors, something different about the pro level competitor, the way they think, you know, the, the way they structure their practice, um, uh, the way they prepare for a match the way they break down a stage, you know, all these little things. And then, and then it gets into the technique and you start to say, Oh, you know, if you're, if you're at home and you're just trying to get better on your own, you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over. You don't see that big improvement, but when you can come and see a new way of thinking and a new way of practicing and you're like light bulbs go off. Yeah. And then you take those, that mindset home and that way to practice home, you start to practice like the pros, right? You start to think like the pros and then, you really start to see a big improvement, you know? And so hopefully that's what we can transfer to the student going home. They just have a new way of doing things and there'll, there'll be some positive change in, in what they're doing at home through practice, dry fire and live fire. When I first started shooting, I, I remember, uh, that, and I remember talking to a firearms instructor at the time and, and they were a popular firearms instructor and they were telling me about, Oh, I have a private class to do. And I really don't like doing them because all I do is stand there and tell them, do that faster. And I remember thinking, like, do you, should you really be telling me this? <laughs> because yeah. I'm kind of one of your potential customers, and now I'm not really so sure that that's, that's really the route I want to go, simply because that doesn't sound to me to be very effective. That, yeah. that was what I did for a long time, just trying to get better. By you know, We talked a lot in class about that. You can get a little bit faster by being brute force. Um, just increasing the reps, just increasing. And you may be doing something wrong, but by sheer effort, you do something wrong faster. You do something wrong a little bit better. And and one of our goals was to kind of maybe, you know, we'll, we'll go 25-cent words. We wanted to intellectualize it a little bit and help somebody kind of cut those corners by thinking about it, doing it a little more efficiently, um, looking for some some ways to make that improvement more intelligently than just brute force throw rounds at it, throw reps at it. Sure. Yeah, you know, one, one of the things I was really um, surprised at was the very first drill that we did um, was something that was a, like a light, a light bulb m moment for me where I expected to, like, you know, the, be like the, you know, it's a three-day class. I expected, like, first half of the day it's going to be some drills, and then, you know, we're going to just do shooting. You're going to make sure we don't, you know, laser our feet and shoot each other and shit like that, and then – we're going to get to like the cool stuff, but it was from like the very first drill where I was like, ah, I've been doing that wrong a long time. <laughs> and it, it was, uh, it was great because, you know, Brian came down the line and, you know, he made some, some minor tweaks and, uh, um, I was like, okay, well that, that is way better than I've been doing it. And then Andy comes along and makes another little tweak and it's like, Jesus, that's even better than I was doing it before. So it was, <coughs> it was pretty cool to, uh, to get to do that. And then, like, this, uh, you know, final day going over the, the complex targets and then putting it all together, that part was, was really cool because then you're thinking back to, like, that first drill, and you're like, okay, so when I get over to this, this port, I'm going to want to make sure I, you know, set my shotgun up in the, in the proper way that they taught me on the first day and stuff like that. So it was, uh, it was definitely, like, a, a unique experience of uh, rather than just going and throwing rounds, you know, at, at targets. So it was, uh, it was a more structured – type of uh, evaluation it was it was cool to get that feedback you, you see shooting courses all the time advertise round counts yeah and 
and you see people actually kind of, you'll see guys on the internet doing their reviews and they'll actually brag about going somewhere and shooting a thousand rounds in a day. And, um, if you, if you spend any time trying to get better, you know that shooting a thousand rounds in a day doesn't really make you better. Your hands are bloody and sore and you actually arguably sucked at the end of the day because of the <laughs> yeah. fatigue and you were, you know, like we talked, you were doing bad reps. You were actually teaching yourself poorly because you just weren't into it anymore. You shot a bunch of rounds. You got to tell your buddies it was really cool. You were dirty. Um, your, your gun was starting to kind of m- maybe be a little choky because it was clogged up. But but really, did you did you do it intelligently? Did you actually really improve? In 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 two months down the road, was your skill set improved, or did you just go and, and burn a thousand rounds two months ago? Yeah. So yeah, and you know that's it's uh it's interesting with the the drills that we did. They weren't like super high volume. Um, round count right but they were they were definitely effective and they definitely took their toll like every, built. every bullet had eyeballs on it kind yeah of. absolutely well and and the, it was great you know th- there was like you said what 16 people in the class and we had you know three instructors um that were there throughout the whole time and various helpers you know throughout the uh mm-hmm. the time there was not a time where you were doing something where you're just like god am i doing this right where you didn't have someone within like arm's reach where you could say hey brian you know, yeah, and then the other thing was, wrong here? you know, all the students kind of learned how to watch and s- a little do a little bit of self-diagnosis, a little bit of self-correction. This is what the gun recoils like if I do this. Now I watch the dot. This is what the rifle recoils like if I tweak this. And now you kind of know a little bit of uh, how to self-diagnose, how to how to see what's going on. Well, maybe if I if I stiffen the right side of my of my body up, the gun's not going to go to the right as much. So that's that's also a little bit of a a little bit of a trick we use. Oh, you can self-diagnose this now. Now you can see it. Now when you go home, you know what it looks like when it goes right, when it goes wrong, when it goes different, how to evaluate a new technique. Right. That that evaluation <coughs> tool is really important, especially a self-evaluation p- tool. And, and we talk a lot about the discipline to self-evaluate. Um, you've got to agree with yourself that, that at some point you'll have that discipline to self-evaluate. Otherwise, you'll lie to yourself and just kind of let yourself get bad habits or maybe do the technique poorly or something like that. Um we worked really hard uh, from the first class. We've got three different people here who do things three pretty different ways. Um, I think we learn differently. We practice differently. We've all arrived at a pretty pretty high level of shooting different ways. And we, we just kind of had a, it. It went fairly easy from the beginning in that we never had a problem like having, a, having an ego fight or slapping each other around and arguing whose technique was best. It came off pretty easy as being able to say, hey, there's there's different ways to get here. And I think the big offering there is, is uh, as a student, you get to kind of pick and choose. Hey, okay, I, I think like Andy. So the, the more disciplined, regimented approach to dry fire, I'm going to buy off on, on that and, and incorporate that a little bit more. Or, you know, vice versa with Brian and I's technique. Mm-hmm. And that winds up being a plus with the caveat that, that we keep – the egos in check and, and just mm-hmm. offer that advice as hey here's an option here's here's something for you to do right sure well and a lot of it comes back to principles we all kind of agree and all pretty much all the top level shooters agree the principles are the same we have different styles of achieving them of, of, of doing them and andy's style works best for him craig's works best for him mine works best for me it's just finding a different style and then <laughs> students are now with three different instructors and three different styles kind of yeah they get to pick and choose this is what works for me because i am like this yeah this is like me yeah you know and that that really worked out <coughs> worked out well for for me too in in the way that i was think, thinking about and approaching the class is because when i look at like the volume of live fire that you do or like how structured andy is with his dry fire and all his spreadsheets and everything like that honestly it makes me feel like Wow, I suck. I am not that putting any sort of came out of the bag. Any yeah. sort of effort into that this cat's whatsoever. Been out of the bag for a while, man. Yeah. <laughs> but then when uh, but a when I hear at this Craig's point. like, yeah, I don't have any spreadsheets, and I don't, you know, do the level of dry fire, and, and you know, it's like okay, maybe I'm not so bad. Made me feel a little bit better about myself. Craig's just lowering the bar. That's all. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Thanks I, for lowering the bar. I, I, I would say this. I, I'm, I'm inherently lazy, but I also have a uh, a, a desire to be. <laughs> be competitive and excel so i've become I, i'm amazingly efficient in my drive to get back to a state of laziness <laughs> you're like a like a lion right they just lie around yeah, all day yeah. until it's time to uh, either right to be a lion or uh, no. yeah 
<laughs> or go, so, go eat so something. So, you know, I, I do, and, and, and I've got a lot of time demands. I've got a lot of activities, so I've had to become pretty efficient with things. And, and I found that, you know, some things don't work for me in organizational levels, but looking for absolute effectiveness. And I think, you know, driving through and, and finding actual objective imperial evidence-driven things to make something better has worked for me really well. Um, not chasing, you know, I chased a lot of opinions early on because I always thought that other guy's opinion was more valid than mine. And what I actually found was you have to chase the actual evidence. Um, Ken said the other day, he says, you know, I noticed an amazing correlation between how many guys are out here breaking down stages and walking stages and how many guys that I hand trophies to. Yeah. How many guys are out here putting in the work and how many guys I see walking the prize table first. And that was where I started changing my route uh, to getting better and listening to those guys or seeking those guys' advice out. You know, and I've, I've got many people to thank, way too many to set and list. But, you know, there's guys who are amazingly helpful with their sharing of information, their sharing of experience. And that's what I found was by talking to a lot of those guys, I could pick and choose what worked for them, what was most effective for me. And, you know, that's kind of how you build, build that deal. And, and that's, you know, I look at it a couple different ways. The sport's been really good to me, so I want to give back to those guys coming up and, and let them know, hey, there's there's really no secret. Go talk to guys. Go pick their brains. Go sit at home and, and kind of work through and see see whose ideas work through for you. Um, and I found very few people, even people who do things very different than me, that their information is, is not valuable. Their information is always valuable, even if they're pretty different. You always can pick through it and go, ah, I see what's going on there and, mm -hmm. and get it. So. Well, and it's cool. You know, everyone's different, and people just think, you know, different ways. So it's it's nice to, like you said, hear how those different people think. That's what I love about the uh, the podcast. I'm going to get real nerdy for a minute here. But it's it's so cool to be able to, you know, reach out to – I mean, like the three of you guys are, like, completely different people. And we've had, had on, you know, 50 different people that are all thinking about this, the, some, the sport in a different way. But, like, one of you guys is going to connect with one of the listeners – or one of the listeners is going to connect with you guys, whatever the case may be. But they're going to, like, there's someone out there that, like, has a spreadsheet type of system. And I'm, I don't mean I'm to bring it up. more than spreadsheets, man. And I keep bringing it up, but I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not more trying than to do spreadsheets denigrate. and biceps, man. <laughs> there, there is a spreadsheet and bicep guy out there that's like, AP is my God, right? And <laughs> <laughs> and then there's someone out there that's like, I identify more with, with Brian's style or more with Craig's style. What time style. is it? <laughs> <laughs> These are heavy spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. for, for people listening at home, Andy just fle flexed huge holding his spreadsheets. So. That, was that was my half flex, too. The, the sh half medium flex. shirt about <laughs> tore and flew off <laughs> and cut Brian into shreds. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, to kind of carry this thought a little more uh, – I th it might have been Keith, too. The first time he talked about a system, or it might have been Ron Avery, like the system, right? And that kind of intrigued me, the system that these guys have. You have to develop your system. And I think that's true with everybody as a shooter. Everyone's developing that system. And to come to a class with three different systems, like we developed ours mm -hmm. on our own, picking and choosing here and there, and just kind of what works for us. Now, it's like a little, uh, a little buffet of systems. You know, you can sure. learn from three top-level guys and – and see, you know, what works, different styles of loading and all these little intricacies and something clicks. You work it. Yeah, that works for me, too. And then they take it home. They see all these things and they start building their own system at home. So so how do you build that system? Can you elaborate on, like, what the system is and, and what it should, you know, what maybe what it looks like for you? This is a work in progress. It on, it honestly is. This is a work in progress. Let me check my Google Drive. <laughs> <laughs> no. Out of the three of us here, I am the the baby in the sport, right? This is my fourth year, just starting my fourth year. Yeah. Um, you and I, by the way, have, like, uh, similar times in, in the sport. Cool. Yeah. Right? Um, and I wanted to excel. I've just got this – it's kind of a personal belief. Anything I do, I want to be the best at, right? I have a belief I can – there's no, like, special person that can outperform me, right? I know there's certain gifts and that – and. But I think pretty much all of us, bearing, barring some, like, disabilities or whatever, we're all equally capable of performing at the top level of the sport. So to me, it's like, okay, well, what are the top level guys doing, right? Figure it out. Go to a class. Learn from some, some high-level guys. I took a class from Brian and Keith. Learned a ton of stuff. Things started to click. 
Ron Avery, so on and so forth. So I take these things and I go home. Um, a big, a big part of it for me is schedule, right? If you want to get serious about something, you have to have a schedule. Like if, if I'm going to practice when I get some time, a practice is never going to happen, right? It's very true. So for me, and this may be my anal retentiveness, but I have a very, my daily schedule is planned out. I get up at a certain time. I work out at a certain time. So my little, my pre-workout powder. I'm just, I'm just totally surprised. <laughs> I, I'm just blown away over Chris it. Chris just like loving this. Boom. You guys Mind are blown. like the odd couple. We are. Dude, it's, you know, I, I, it's funny though because no, we have, some, let's pretty be, good, we have some pretty good chemistry. Yeah, too, we, so. we actually, you know, there's there's definitely been some history there. And, and it was, it's it's time to like, um, the more time we spent together, we actually, there's actually a lot of, a lot of these desires are the same way. The fact that we've arrived at these two different, two different spots through some really odd paths is uh, is kind of pretty odd. And we've had a good time, man. I mean, we've giggled and, and, and had a great time with it. So it, it's it's fun to it's fun to tease Andy because you know he looked at me and said something the other day about you know just like the schedule, like oh my schedule, and he's like, yes, I have a schedule. <laughs> I'm blown away, man. I had no idea. <laughs> so, he's got a Monday spreadsheet, and, and, a Tuesday and what it is is it's um. Here's the deal, I w- I would I would love to be like Andy. I've spent a lot of my life like trying to be like Andy. Like, okay, tomorrow it's starting, man. I'm gonna start getting up at se- six o'clock and this. And oh that. man, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have bins around my house that are organized with labels on them, and uh, that type of thing. <laughs> and, and and I make a good effort, but it just never happens. Dude, honestly, um, I, I'm very much the same way. Like, I so want to be. Like the super organized guy with the spreadsheet and stuff like that, but I'll I'll be I'll be honest. Like there, I was just moving my uh, my stuff from my laptop from a hard drive to a solid drive, and uh, I found like all these spreadsheets. Like I had started, like yep, this is gonna be it. I'm gonna I'm gonna maintain <laughs> this, and it's gonna go. And it's like, damn, that thing is like two years old. I never touched that. And and I'll be honest with you, what I found was was, you know, okay, it, it didn't happen, and it was kind of that accepting that. My system isn't necessarily bad because it's not that organized. I just I'm not working my system, and my system works. I've I've, I've made this work. Um, my girlfriend and I giggle about this all the time because you know, girlfriend's like, I want to put this. You know, she's got boxes. The shoe boxes are labeled. They're organized by colors and rainbow and according oh my to uh, you know fall, winter, spring. She's gonna kick my ass, but you know <laughs> all, all that kind of thing. She's, um, this sounds great. Yeah, I'm I, a lot I, of I good know stuff you right totally now. Right? Color coded. Are you color coded? Ta- he's taking yeah. notes. And, he's uh, color coding his you know, P-Max. That, That's how she does. And, and, <laughs> and we get along great because she knows she knows how I organize stuff. And, and you know, I put something down and I take a picture, and I'm that visual that visual organizer. I know where that thing is because I took a picture in my head of where it's sitting. Uh, it's not that it's in its place, dude. Right? But I, I know I'm, exactly where that is. Dude, we are way too much alike. Yeah. I, I do that thing too. Like if someone moves something that I set down, whether it was in the spot it was supposed to be or not, I I'm so. gone. I'm lost. It's like I, I cannot find that thing. I, and I've got a picture of how it was set. And, you know, yeah. like a key ring, and, and 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 the key ring's got some. I can tell you how my keys were setting and the directions they were poking, and I know right where they were. If I can't find them, you know. Then I'm like, nope. I've got a, boom. I got a yeah. picture. Of it. But our organizational skills are different, so it was it was pretty interesting to come back because then then as we started asking questions about this class, we started organizing this class. Our answers were still the same. We'd arrived at the answers a lot differently, but the answers were were the same, and that that started kind of you know being pretty cool. And so it's it's fun to flip shit now. And, and, <laughs> and Andy Andy brought his boss down, and his boss dived him out. We had no idea ice cream goes in the temple. Over there, you can't say that on the podcast, bro. Temple, so ice cream. And anyway, Andy yeah. likes him some ice cream, so it was kind of it was kind of nice to know that there's a human side to to this organizational skill, right? And and, and I, I kind of like that because he, you know, it took Andy a while to open up to us, and now he's you now now Andy's pissed. So I got my girlfriend pissed, and Andy Andy's now looking I'm, at me. I'm like, not I'm not exactly telling, pissed. I know, he's not he's not pissed. But he's, I'll tell you, he's one in thing. an aggressive posture right now, though. But. <laughs> He knows that camera's <laughs> over there. I'm kind of a quiet, introspective guy, and a lot of people don't know me, right? It, it always surprises me when people start to like, oh, I never knew, da 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 da, right? Yeah. So, uh, family and friends, they know my personality. You know, I've I've always kind of been the same way, but I think you know, quiet, introspective kind of guys, you can get the wrong impression of because you don't really get a lot from them until I get to know them, that kind of thing. So, yeah. But this system, so it's, been, it's been a cool road. It, it, it honestly has. So it's it's been fun. 
the concept of a system, though, I mean, Craig's system, my system, the way you practice your schedule, it goes into like where you dry fire, when you dry fire, what you dry fire, if you dry fire, <laughs> live fire, how you prepare for a match, right? How you prepare for a stage, how you walk stages, all this kind of stuff. There's a way and a method to do the stuff, and that's your system, right? You're developing it. And you get it. You look at Greg Jordan. You want to talk about a robot. I mean, that's that guy's a robot. He goes through, and I'd love to hang out with him or Dan Horner for like a month, just kind of see how they do things and just get their systems down a little better. Um, but everyone, everyone will develop their system. The, the 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 kicker, though, if you're at a level where you're not satisfied with your shooting and you want to get better. And you keep doing the same thing, right? You got to find something new. You got to find some changes, and go into a class, getting different perspectives on something. That's where you're going to get these changes and shortcut some stuff. Because maybe you figure it out, but it's going to take you five, ten years. Right. Or you can go just get it right from the source. Guys that have already like well, got and, there, and, and then just tr- take this big leap forward and and uh, the key really to, fast track your progress. The key to it as well is is how do you intel- intelligently choose a new system or a change to your system right it is is a web forum that is is a facebook group that you know maybe maybe not I, yeah just know. accept the uh, advice of the random dude on facebook that yeah, thinks how, he knows how, what he's talking so, about so how do you actually and that's kind of what drove me was how do i make a good decision about that how do how am i at least slightly objective about it how do i actually see some results to help base those decisions off of and 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 like we were talking we kind of we start talking wow, we arrived at some of the same decisions the same way. So it was actually pretty cool developing this and, and stuff like that. Yeah, so, Brian, you've been doing this for a long time. Are you the yeah. vet here, even though they're no, the youngest? Seems no, like, uh, no, Craig, you've been Craig doing this still longer? got me by a, by a ways. Okay. I, I started shooting pistol in November of 2008, so sometime this year I'll, I'll hit eight years in the shooting sports, and 2010 was the first time I started taking three-gun kind of seriously. When did you, when did you start with the – the whole cowboy action thing, or like the shooting sports, the very first intro. The very first intro was actually an IDPA match in late, I think probably late 2007, and that was once a month. wasn't really serious. It was okay. just a cool, let's go down and shoot. Found out there was a USPSA club here in St. George. The IDPA club was an hour's drive. How They're old were like you Nine at the years time? old. At I know the time. that's the yeah. thing. Let's just, put it in perspective. Yeah. How old were you? Math, I've been doing way. this half my life, <laughs> but that's not my, many years. So, so, so then. Do you have a system? Oh, yeah, but it changes constantly. Uh, mine's a lot more like Craig's. Um, I've, I've been working on changing it, and that's kind of, as you've seen more recently, my match finishes have started getting higher and higher. So, like, just recently I won the Hardest Hell match. I, I won a three-gun nation match in uh, Florida. Changing things in how I prepare for matches and, and starting to plan things out more long range, start to, uh, you know, not screw around with my gear as much. I found kind of the, the the gear that works, and it's you know maybe not the gamiest stuff, but it, it's reliable. Um, now I'm going to a match and my guns aren't breaking. Now I'm going to a match and my ammo's not unpredictable. Now I'm going to a match and my rifle's zeroed, a hundred percent zeroed, and I actually know what the drops are, things like that. And it's it's been putting it together in a less um, scatterbrained fashion and and. Uh, Less of an accuracy by volume kind of guy now, <laughs> trying to be. Um, I, don't, I don't know after one match you can really claim that title. You know uh, what I mean? th- th- there's been more than one recently. Okay. I actually just got back All from right. a couple other things. It, was it, it Area 2 Stop well? screwing with my self-concept, Andy. <laughs> Did you read the, it's, the it's book? It's his self-image. He's recreating the self-image, yes. and, and I'm trying to get in the way the of term that. In the, uh, I think the term's rebranding. I don't want to get in the way. I don't care. You sold me. It's a new me. <laughs> which which which, which, me, of the, which of the four of us are you, you trying to me. convince? Shh. Yeah. <laughs> shush, shush, Craig. <laughs> Stop it. My self-image is fragile. Uh, I'm just a poor little eighteen-year-old boy. Speaking of self-image, you know we talk a lot about the practice <laughs> and the drills and the schedule and the system and all that. A big part of system is this mental game, right? And and that's something we tried to incorporate <laughs> a little bit into the class too. We prefaced it a little bit at the start to frame the class. And we hit on those points throughout the class. Um, and hopefully that started to sink in a little bit more because it's not just about the drills and the practice and the technique. It's more about how you think, right? Changing the mindset, thinking like a champion, not just, you know, the skill set of a champion. So that's a big part of it. To, to Brian's credit, right, just to use, use this example, um, 
one of the big things we hit on in class and we talk to guys about about practicing is is you have to let go of that old self concept of of what you had going on to improve right and you have to let go of that self concept of you have that you have of you as a shooter at, at the local match to improve and um so i think that's one of the things that, that people have a tendency to to have difficulty with is in their improvement is is They've locked themselves into kind of one vision of themselves, and yep. I'm not a good rifle shooter, or I can't, I, I, you know, Texas Stars always eat my lunch, or propeller plate racks. I hate those apart. spinners. I hate oh, spinners, gosh. right? We heard that a lot today. Yeah. I And I t- told you guys to learn to love them, <laughs> yeah. because once you get good at them. Um, so all of those things happen, and unless you can let go of that old self-image, you can't develop the new and improved self-image. So there's there's a good thing to come from saying, I'm not going to be the accuracy by volume guy anymore. Yeah. I'm going to be the accuracy guy. Right. And, and it's it's not just lying to yourself and, and making this fake self-image without doing it. You have to admit, yeah, right now I'm the accuracy by volume guy, but I've changed my system. I've changed the way I practice. I don't use part-times in my dry fire anymore. When I go to practice a shotgun reload, I don't even use a part-time. I know I can do it fast. I want to perform it with some sense of urgency. I do it five times in a row without screwing it up. And if I don't, I go back to rep number one until I can do it five times in a row or ten times in a row without screwing it up. When I shoot an offhand plate rack, now instead of just looking at the timer and seeing how fast I can go, I don't even look at the timer unless I went six for six on a 50-yard plate rack. That's mm-hmm. kind of rebranding and, and, and changing how I how, what my system is uh, yeah. to, to make that self-image true. And I like that. And anyone can change at any at any moment in time most people don't right most people are who they are from like junior high to high school and and on but you can make that that concerted effort like ah, i want to be the the stats guy or the uh, spreadsheet guy or whatever and uh and kind of move yourself toward that that direction here's a key thing on self-image too because it's kind of like the governor right that's like a ceiling and until you can change that self-image i don't care how good you get or the techniques you learn that's really what is the limiter for you Right. And it's like Brian said, well, it's not a lie. All a self image is you've created that self image, right? It's just a thing in space that you've, you've told yourself that's who you are. It's not like that is who you are and you're trying to become someone else, right? You've already thought yourself into a self image. And this is just simply thinking a different way to create another self image equally valid, right? Self images. There's no real self image that is yours. You've created it over your lifetime. You might identify as that person, like, this is just who I am. No, that's how you've, that's what you've become by the way you've thought, right? Equally valid is the championship self-image. And there's a way to get from this one to this one. And if you want to do it, there's some great ways to do it. And that's kind of, you know, we tried to talk a little bit about it, that in the class as well. Yeah, and I really enjoyed that part of the class and your three C's. In the Ooh, my three C's. Oh, yeah. Do you want to tell us about the three C's? Well, I don't have a whiteboard, but... <laughs> Plus, it's a podcast. Maybe they so, can't so, see the whiteboard. So, Peterson. audio, describe it then. Okay, so. Imagine if you will. Okay, I where I started with this is like the championship circle, right? There's three types of competitors. There's the champions. And, and what I mean by champions is not necessarily guys who win every match, but have won or are consistent winners or who have become champions you know, throughout their career. I think of like three guys and everyone's kind of got maybe their different ideas, but like Daniel Horner, Greg Jordan, he's kind of new to the championship circle over the, he's really come on strong, but I mean, solidly there, Keith Garcia, right? Just three examples. Um, The way they think, the way they practice, the things they do to get to where they are. These are just human beings. Their self image as a champion, they don't go to a match and hope to win, man. They're, you know, if you could think like those guys going into a match, most most guys could almost win a match with their right. skill set. Then you've got outside of that circle, you've got the competitors, right? Um, did I? What were my three C's? Casual, Casual was the was the next one. Andy. Okay, yes. So the, yeah, the competitive shooter. Sorry. <laughs> I don't have my spreadsheet. <laughs> I, I don't have my I, visuals. I, I've, it's I've been just, a long I'm, class. I'm Dave. I feel so empowered right now. <laughs> Well, I, I would Let's just like to say that I did take a photo no. of when you drew it on the board. So, I'll, and I will include that in the uh, the show I, notes I for the official. No, no, no. No, no, no. What I was going to say is, is, is 
because Andy's talked about it before. You've got your champions, you've got your competitive shooters, and you've got your casual shooters. Right. And the di- the distinction in those is is the thinking. So go go ahead and finish that off. You you ha- you had a hiccup. We've reminded you. Finish it up. I appreciate you stuff. all. I appreciate with you it. all very much. It's it's you get back on plan. Get back on strategy. Let's so your go. casual shooter or your your competitive shooters, and that's where the bulk of the sport is, right? Everyone's trying to get into that uh, that championship ring, right? To become a champion, right? So everyone's trying. They're trying different things. Occasionally you'll have those stage wins and you're getting closer mm-hmm. and closer and closer and you're drive. But eventually you got to start to think like a champion. you got to have practice like a champion to get there. So you're constantly changing your system. The casual guys are more out there to have fun. They may even come and take classes. But do they go home and implement that stuff or do they go back to their regular old lifestyle? And most of them have convinced themselves that they will never become or can't become champions. Their right. ceiling is keeping them right. in that ring. Now, the big kicker is the belief, right? Um, to get, you know, there's like these like... Concentric circles. Yeah, and you cannot get inside a circle until you believe you can, right? That opens up the doorway. Then you have to figure out what you need to change, the how-to to get through, but then it's about work at that point. Putting forth through the work, doing the steps, making the changes to get to that next level. Yes, yeah, that enough. I really enjoyed that that uh, portion of the class when you did that. That you know specifically spoke to me and and things I think about in like my own practice, my own game, and and stuff like that. And I I really hope everyone else took a, away as much as I did from that. But I I really enjoyed that, and uh, it, it's it's amazing how how you you've got like these are what I call the three C's. These are the this you know that sort of thing. It's 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 funny how you come. Uh, I think and I write a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Spreadsheet. I've got little diagrams, too. It's not just spreadsheets. <laughs> you you got have no idea, charts. Dave. i got diagrams. It's, it's all, it, it, seriously, it's one of those things, like like, like we've said, like it's, oh, one day I'll, have, I'll be organized. Oh, I know, right? I know. And my organization system is actually incredibly effective. I can find anything I need. I, I've, I've got those plans, and I probably think about things a lot. I, I, I think back then in college, um, you would have a paper due, and, and – and Karen and I were talking about this, and, and when she writes a paper, she has her outline done and her rough draft when the teacher wanted an outline and a rough draft. <laughs> and, and and then the paper's probably done two weeks early, and she's had the teacher read it two or three times again before oh she my God. it in. Oh, my God. Oh, no, and, and she's awesome, man. She crushes stuff, right? Yeah. Now, me, never hit an outline date, rarely got a rough draft done. <laughs> and maybe two or three in the morning before the paper was due, I sat down and I typed it out. Yeah. And I would still pull an A. I'd still pull a good grade on it. Um, but the process was different. And I'd been thinking about it that whole time. It just never got put to paper until it absolutely had to be put to paper. And it, it wasn't that. It wasn't necessarily a procrastination thing. It was just I didn't work that way. I can't write a. I can't write a rough draft. And and I would suspect that. You're, you you have a pretty solid concept of rough drafts, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean maybe not to that level, and it's been a while since I've been in school too. Right, but but, but you know what I mean. It was it's that that preparation. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's it's the same deal, and you just arrive at it differently. I'll it, tell you a big thing with me too is what I want to do. Like school, I'll procrastinate some things too, and I can get disorganized. But things that I care about, like shooting, yeah. it's easy. You know, oh, the, okay. the the hobbies that I'm passionate about yeah. and the things I want to improve at, it's just easy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm much more like Craig. It's why uh, when uh, someone says something stupid on the podcast, and they're like, you can edit that out. It's like, yeah, but I probably won't. <laughs> it just sounds like more work. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> that just sounds like work. <laughs> it does. Right? You know, and, and it, it's it's not like it's, uh, you know, bad work or anything like that. It's something I enjoy, but it's like, I think it's good. I, I like it raw. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so it works that way. Well. Again, guys, you know, um, said it earlier, but, you know, I want to say um, say it in front of uh, other people on the podcast because I think I have to now. I really enjoy this class. No, I'm just kidding about it. Had to, but I really enjoyed this class. This was, like, amazing. This was three days well spent. I was so burnt out after that first day, 12 hours. I don't know how you guys did it. Um, 13, Dave. 13? I, ca- I counted. That, uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we started at 730. And we were finishing up dinner discussion yeah. at 8.30 out here. And let's well, let's preface it, too, because that wasn't 13 hours of range time. 
That's true. Right. We wrapped up. We came back no. in. We had a good, you know, as a group, we had a we had a dinner brought in, uh-huh. and we wanted and to talk some concepts for day two. We did that on purpose, and but it was long. It was a long yes. day. Well, and, and I know you did it on purpose. It wasn't like you guys ran over or anything. Yeah. But the uh, the the content was great, you know, and like I was learning all the way up until we walked out the door, um, you know, that, that first day. So it was definitely like not a dull moment in that, that first 13 hours. Like, honestly, guys, you know, when you look at that, like this could – be like a four or five day class because you, <laughs> well, you cram we, we, those. We, we, we've joked about it. We're we're not joking. You don't say, even yeah. you don't we, even know the stuff we, we had to yeah. cut we, out. We 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 had to cut some stuff out. I we, mean, we cut some stuff out that we had planned in this already. Just yeah. schedule changing and trying to keep on time. Um, and and we've joked about it, but seriously, it's like this is the condensed version of a twelve day actual three day. Yeah, three class. yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you've got three day pistol, three day shotgun, three day rifle. And then integrating the integrating. three, right? Yeah. You know how much more how how much more in depth could we have gone to stage breakdown? Oh God, yeah. Just, just we we did we did three hours of specialty targets this morning. But how many more how many more specialty targets are out there? How many yeah. Polish plate racks? How many Texas stars? How many Death Stars could we have shot to give you every presentation? You, ha, ha, have you you know how about the the dry, the golf cart driving class so you can shoot Iron Man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right? The drive-by you class. Know, the, the shotgun shooting out of a golf cart and keeping your pistol pointed in a safe direction while you're engaging targets in the berm, right? I mean, it's just all kinds of things And like even that. just the fundamentals of shooting, right? The fundamentals yeah. of shooting a pistol well, a rifle well, and a shotgun well. You could do a pistol for three days just on fundamentals, rifle three days, so on and so forth. And we offer a pistol class for three days, by Ooh. the way. TacticalPerformanceCenter.com. <laughs> plug, for, plug for TPC. Plug and first Very boom. Nice. And Ken, time, time mark crap. 1536. <laughs> Ken trains the sun well. Actually, actually, that was a while. You're going to be in trouble for not getting Yeah, yeah I know. There should be at least three in by I now. I should have plugged front sight first, though. <laughs> oh, there wow. is There is a nice color. Uh, it's right behind us. Yes, yes. yes. So. No, what, what was actually cool was these were long days. Um, we put a lot of work in. Even after three days of pretty long days, mm-hmm. um, you'll see students at long classes. I, I, te- I uh, used to participate in a, in a USAR class. It was a medical specialist class. It was a week long. We ended up with this huge exercise that was, you know, it's a night exercise. There's weather involved in it. You're crawling through a, a crushed building, all this kind of stuff. It's, it's not only pretty intense on the educational side, it's pretty intense on the physical side. And you would see people at the end of that week who are just smoked. They had nothing to say. They did, they could they couldn't absorb anything that was being said. And at the end of this three days, everybody was still kind of asking questions. Yeah. Everybody was still participating in the class, and everybody was still kind of interacting. And that's pretty rare. So it, it was good feedback for us to just kind of be like, all right, we'll keep going. Yeah, we'll, no kidding. We'll, and, it, and it kind of drives you, even though you're feeling tired. It's like, I've still got students who want to want to get some more. So okay. I gotta so, get on that horse and keep riding. So, do you guys see yourself doing this class again? Love to, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I see the market growing for it too, big time. Like my only, my only challenge, and it's probably well, Brian, maybe not, not me. But <laughs> this is kind of my job. <laughs> you time. know, we're also yeah, we're also full time shooters trying to be right. We try to get out as to as many matches as we can, which is vacation days, and then to splice training in. That's also vacation days too. So that's so. the biggest challenge for me. Is, yeah. is getting and, and there's there. probably a balance between you going out and teaching me and and Bill and and all these other people in the class. A little shout out to shooting buddy Bill there. But buddy Bill. <laughs> who, who, by the way, Bill. guys, yeah. if if you've listened in on the podcast, I uh, I had heard of of good shooting buddy Bill before. Um, turned out to be one of my favorite students <laughs> in this class. Yeah. Bar none. Yeah. Um, Bill Bill did the job, man. He kicked ass. Uh, he was one of probably the the most aggressive guys coming up and learning and all of that. So, uh, Bill, just a good shout out to Bill putting in the effort. Bill is eager, and um, you know I I always call him my shooting buddy Bill because he he really is. You know Bill's a good. Uh, I can't look at him while saying this. I'll, I'll look at you, Andy. <laughs> Bill's a really good dude, and he's he's very similar to Andy in a lot of ways, where he's very meticulous in a lot of things. Yeah, spreadsheets. Yeah, I w- yeah. I would imagine he's got a lot of spreadsheets. Awesome. But, but he also kind of like pushes me to get my shit together in in a lot of ways without like pushing too hard right it's more of just like uh you know seeing how 
um, structured bill is, and he's got a box for everything, and everything's written down, and he's constantly taking notes and making notes, and like, hey, what was that one thing that that so and so said? Did you know, and and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's it's good to have those training partners that kind of push you to to be better. So, so, and the class in general. Kudos to you, Bill. Right, the class in general was great. I class mean, I couldn't fantastic. have asked for a better group yeah. of dudes just yeah. trying to just plow through three days of that, staying. You know, I, it was, was it, they were the, really, really good. I was pretty surprised. Probably one of the best classes I've ever seen. I, I've been to a lot of classes, work, different different motivational factors all, all aboard. I've never been to a class where I've seen a group of students who were actually more self-motivated to be there. Oh, yeah. Regardless of what class was going on, regardless of what they were being taught. Mm -hmm. um, the group of students laid it down. They showed up, and, and like I said, even though the days were long, it was pretty easy to kind of step up to the plate because we still had 15 people who were looking at you like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for some more of this. Yeah, and by the way, we were talking about trying, you know, the mornings, start times, how usually people are dragging in late. Yeah. Man, I, I was getting here about 10 <laughs> minutes to start time, and there was a full parking lot. Yeah. And everyone is just in their chair like <laughs> – we, we had what's going on we had waiting we Let's had this go. huge discussion just so you know we had we had a huge long discussion andy and i had the discussion <laughs> over coffee several times and uh just before the class we started having this huge discussion because we knew time was going to be a factor and and we knew we had a lot of students and Andy's like well, let's just start earlier and i'm like man how can okay we start earlier but we still only have you know maybe six to eight hours a day that we can put information in people after that it, it, so regardless of whether we make the daily schedule 10 hours or 12 hours we're still limited by that six to eight hours of, of, of volume that they can yeah. take. And, yeah, day two, said 7.30, everybody's here. Yeah. Day one, 7.30, everybody's here. We even had a spring forward time change. And there yeah, was daylight savings. Yeah. Not, didn't skip a beat. Exactly. The 7 o'clock moved to 6 o'clock this morning, and everyone actually, was there. Actually, there was, there was a little bit of hiccup there. Was there? Yeah, Casey Pratt. Uh, slept oh, in a that, little bit. Uh, Hi, Casey. Out people, and yeah. he slept in the damn the guy, parking yeah, lot. He was, he was in, in the parking lot, in the parking lot, and uh, <laughs> had to, had to give him a little. Uh, <laughs> honey, the bus is coming. It's, you're gonna be late for school. Casey, wake up. Ten more minutes, and, Mom. Uh, so uh, had to get. Him. He was the only one that slept in this morning, but uh, he was still he still made it on time. Everything was good. No, the students were great. I just had to yeah. I had to throw Casey under the bus for a minute. You know. Um, I, w I want to get to like a, like a quick overview of like the three days of curriculum. But since you brought up Casey, I got to say that um, there's been so many people that from that have like reached out to me, um, you know, through Facebook, emails, stuff like that, Instagram followers, and everything. Just kind of like, you know, oh, so and so said this on the show. I really liked it. I bought Steadfast Ammo because of of uh, um, Andy. You know that that sort of thing, right? And a lot of those guys were here. It was trippy, you know, like we had, you know, Casey's reached out to me for, for stuff. And then there was, um, you know, Greg and Dave and, and yeah. uh, all These, kinds of stuff. It was yeah, Casey's a good dude. Like yeah. he, yeah. Uh, he'll, he'll message your sponsors and give them some props and stuff like He's just a good dude. That stuff goes a long way, by the way, to grow the sport and to grow the interest in the sport. So, um, yeah. Well, yeah. that's another thing since you're on it that – we got to mention, and, uh, you know, I don't normally do, like, shameless sponsor plugs, but I, I, I've never been to, like, a class where I walked away with, like, I don't, I don't know, do you even call it a prize? Just, like, something amazing from, from one of your sponsors. You guys reached out to your sponsors, and they, they kicked in a bunch of stuff for yeah. no good reason, and it, it was just unbelievable. It was like a, like a, a decent match prize table here. It wasn't bad, right? Actually, I'll make an argument to you, right? For not for no good reason. Okay. Um, and, and I know I, I know how you meant that. And I'm sure, not, it's I'm just not, something I said. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing: sponsors in the sport are incredible. Um, sponsors in the shooting sports in general are incredible. And what's really cool about these sponsors is when we send that email out and say, "Hey, you know what? I'm going down and teaching a class, and I'm doing this and that, and we have 15 students who are taking three days out of their schedule. They're they're paying a significant amount of money to be there." And they want to be better three gunners, and our sponsors go, yeah, 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 yeah. let's uh, let's Give let's them keep stuff. them motivated, and and you know, let's be honest, the sponsors know that you're an in market <laughs> guy, but they look at that and they go, wow, you know, why wouldn't we support that? Why wouldn't that be a good investment of our 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 time and effort? And and that's why we have that sponsored shooter, or hopefully that's why they have that sponsored shooter to go out and 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 be that ambassador and get guys 
um, introduced, and everybody gets to go home with a little something to go, oh, all right, I'll try this, or, or I needed that. Yeah. Or I've been wanting that. I've well, been shopping for that. This is cool for me because uh, I actually had a, a problem with my uh, trigger. Uh, <laughs> Burke Brian's Gunn Hartman. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I uh, did, it, did like a half a mag dump. I actually, so. It was amazing. Here's yeah. an interesting story, listeners. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're on the long range stage, and, and, and this is pretty common for those of you guys that don't know. Uh, when you're leaning on a barricade or, or you've got a gun supported by a barricade, a lot of times you'll get a little bump fire out of it. But as we're doing drills, uh, Dave, Dave let off a little bit of a burp out of a magazine, and there was it, it was more than the normal little bump fire off a yeah. Off was, a, was this the long range portion? It was the long range portion. Oh my goodness, it was dude. it was ten or twelve rounds. And, that was sexy, yeah. and I honestly didn't know what happened. I I kind of I, I, kinda, <laughs> I expected to be tackled by Brian here. Well, honestly, the, like I thought, he, and he's just like, "All right, you're a little low." <laughs> yeah. And, 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 so I can tell you where the first shot was. Were you trying to walk it in there? <laughs> and, and I was accuracy by volume. That's exactly. I, I had my to back to it, so I only heard it. Yeah, and I actually puckered a little bit, and then I started thinking like it's going to get stingy here in a second because <laughs> I didn't really know what had happened, right? And and I was and the reason being is I'm in a scope looking at a 600 yard target trying to call yeah. shots for somebody, so my attention is so focused, and all I hear is this Whoop! behind me. Yep, and I was like, oh, okay. I, look, I, I look had to back. tell my student, I, the, I had to tell the student I was calling shots for. I'm like. Give me just a second. <laughs> <laughs> I look back at Brian and he's like, "Well, better get a new mag in there." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so okay. So all that said, I um, I actually got a Black Rain Ordnance trigger, which uh, you know I, I know that you had mentioned that Black Rain did uh, triggers, but um, I had not you know seen one in the wild until uh, until this class when I got to dry fire your rifle in uh, in the classroom here. So I'm totally. Stoked to have that. Got a sweet hat from Kenzie's Optics, and uh, got some Mountain Ops Yeti, which I've I've seen you doing the. Uh, I'm talking to Andy here. I've seen Andy doing all the, uh, you know, drinking my pa my powders and stuff like I that. I push my powders on pretty much anywhere I, I can push my powders on. <laughs> I was I peddling <laughs> them out in the class like nobody's business. Oh man, jacket I, like I got one buddy Yeti. takers. What hey, was the little hey. juice you gave me? That was just their – they call it Blaze. It's like – it's similar to like a yes. five-hour energy. Yeah, yeah. Kind of hey, thing. and I'll be honest. It it actually, you know, as, as five-hour energy drink, energy type drinks go, yeah. it worked. Um, Dude, I tell you the, what. The only feedback I got from Mountain Ops, we've got to work on the Flintstone vitamin flavor. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, it, <laughs> well, I, it was I actually never cool because I didn't have the crash off of it, mm -hmm. yeah. but it worked, and it was, it was a great timing on it during that Yeah, day. we were we – were, we were about we that were point guessing. where we it needed a little timing. shot, so, so I peddled some juice I, out. I save my. You gave us this on a uh, day two. I saved mine for this morning, day three, because I was like, yeah, I don't know what this is gonna do. I don't know if it's gonna make me stay up all night. So I had it like this morning with when we were sitting in here in our little morning talk, and asked Brian. Like I was so pumped up when I got to the pistol spinner stage, and it wasn't like caffeine jittery or anything. I was just in a great mood. You know, we're, like, shooting and everything. That, and so. that's what it is for me. It's just that mental focus, a little bit of edge. Yeah. You're not lethargic. Yeah. You're just yeah. thinking a little sharper without that crash or that jittery because you do not want to be yeah. amped up when you're shooting, right? And, it's and a very I didn't fine feel motor. That, that jittery or anything. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, I've got I've got to be honest. I, I, I have enough of the – you know, I, I use enough of those or I have a goofy sleep schedule with work and all that kind of stuff um, that I, I, I consider myself somewhat immune to them. Yeah, and and it it was noticeable. It was actually helpful that day, so I, I'm I'm in. Well, and uh, uh, Bill here walked away with a Vortex Spark from Kenzie's office. So Kenzie sent in like four, six. What was it? Seven, six, seven Vortex Spark twos. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like and so and keep cool. in mind, I shot out an email, a very generic kind of email to all my sponsors and say, hey, this is what we're doing. We got guys coming in. This is what they're paying. You know, wanting to get better. Every single one of them, without question, said absolutely, and we had some stuff. It was even late, so a lot of the sponsors just shipped their stuff straight here. So, like, Vortex sent in the Seven Sparks, or, or Kenzie sent in, Kenzie's. you know, made by Vortex. Um, tons of T-shirts, hats, swag, uh, little cozies, pens, stickers, stuff like that for everybody to take home. Mountain Ops gave everybody some gift certificates, you know, to go home into their account yeah, so they can go cool. in. Uh, they sent one of each, you know, product line down just to kind of see what they're – and they're kind of in the, the supplement, you know, hunting market, and they're getting into the shooting market too. So it's stuff that's very similar. Um, 
shoot uh, steel. Shoot yeah, shoot steel. Send target. an awesome like little like target package. You know, fi- AR five hundred little IPSC or maybe BCC size. It's a mini IPSC, like a half scale. Yeah, IPSC metric target. Um, you know, so people can go home and practice. Uh, extreme. Send a couple bullet certificates, some T-shirts. Um, Black Rain sent like five, 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 triggers, five of those drop-in yeah. triggers. It's totally cool. And so you add all that up, it's a pretty decent par- price table. Yeah. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to think if I missed anybody. Well, and then I'm Terran be, Tactical Innovation them. sent yeah. in a bunch of base pads. Yep. yep. Howard, Howard I, Light gave yeah. a bunch of Ear Pro out. Chris Light is is really good with, good to us um, with with Ear Pro, and uh, he he sets me up with stuff kind of all all season long to to give out and let folks you know give it a try, give it a test drive. And uh, we try to try to spread that out. So I always I always bring some ear pro down here. Um, Phil Levy at Prolix is awesome, um, and he always he's always supportive, especially of a lot of the local matches, the smaller matches that are around. Phil is a great guy to, to give out some products from Prolix. Um, Steve Watts at Elfman Triggers got me some stuff. Oh uh, yeah, uh, their safeties the and, the, safety and their selectors. their uh, their trigger pin kits. Um, right, right now the production that they're they're getting behind on production. The triggers are getting really popular, so he didn't he didn't he apologize. But he didn't have some pr- triggers to send. Mm-hmm. So we will, uh, we, you know, there's always stuff. Th- these sponsors are, are very happy to support the sport. And I think that's really the shout out to those guys. And yeah. um, and then well, basically everybody that we talked to also said, hey, if your guys need anything for the class, here's a discount code. Yeah, I, Elfman, and, and I've got Taren, discount codes yep. to, to send out. Um, Leilani at Warren. Oh yeah, kicked kick me a, a set of rings, rings. and and I can't cool. think of an event that Warren doesn't help out with. Yeah, I yeah. can't think of a person that doesn't get helped out with Warren. And you know, for those reasons alone, it's it's really cool to mention those guys, and I appreciate you giving us a chance to do that because th- those are the guys who are really supporting this sport. So hopefully, yeah. people take that to heart, and and you know, if they've got a choice to buy a product from a company that 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 maybe doesn't do that as much versus a company that that really helps us out, um, they pick that product. You know. Plus, I can't think of any of those products that, that aren't, you know, class leaders Top in their notch. product. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm excited yeah. to, to uh, drop that trigger and try it out. And pretty, the, and then, pretty stoked. Yeah. And then the other thing was, um, you know, I I fell behind. Andy was like super gangbusters getting his sponsors on board to help out with his class for giveaways. I, I was like, I was feeling kind of like, oh, and yeah, Andy brought like five <laughs> triggers, seven scopes. Well, I'll I got tell some you, base pads. <laughs> I'll tell you, man, it was an email. No, but oh I, yeah, that was it. And, and so I, credit goes got credit goes to the sponsors pads, on that. And well, did you see the look on those guys' faces that took them? They were very happy. Well, and and the thing with the base pads too is I was a little bit hesitant with, to to talk to Taryn and Taryn Tactical because it's kind of a newer sponsorship and a newer higher level. Even though Taryn's my friend, I'm kind of like still working out what I, you know what what to ask for, how how it works, and every company's a little bit different. I talked to Taryn about a gun thing, a gun problem I had in Florida, and it's just a part that hit service life. Hey, can you send me another tuned part? By the way, I have this class coming up. This was, uh, I think, Wednesday. <laughs> wow. It's like, it's by the way, I have this class coming up. I don't know if you want to, like, when you're sending me some stuff, if you want to send some stuff for this class, cool. I know it's short notice. I know you don't, you know, the overnight's going to be, no, no, don't worry about it. And, oh, lo and behold, there's six PMAG base pads and, and six Glock base well, pads. Well, so cool. And, and to, give, to give folks a little better idea, um, the first class we had, Ari at Rainier, shipped stuff down here yeah. because I had called so late, um, and it was close. Kenzie's did that for Andy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as, as the deadline got close, they were cool enough to ship stuff down. And so not only are these companies supporting the sport, they're, they're kind of bending over backwards and taking care of us, too, because yeah. we, we may not get that email out timely fashion. Or we, we, we might be cramped on schedule. And they're helping us out a lot, too. Mm-hmm. So that's and I, really cool. You know, I said, hey, cool marketing opportunity. You know, whatever yeah. you feel comfortable with. There was, and Kenzie's was funny, too. How about we send, like, seven, you know, Vortex <laughs> Spark 2s? And is that good? I'm and, like, like enough you know what? Perfect. for every guy I was in thinking a couple stickers, but, you know, that works. <laughs> Optics work. <laughs> is this a major match or is this a class? I yeah. don't know. You realize there's, like, 16 people here, right? That's, like, half but, the class gets a red dot. But so that's, cool. The cool, that's the cool thing about – like this setting, these group of guys, you're coming home with a lot of knowledge. You inv- you've invested some money and some time away from home, away from family. And hopefully, you know, between the knowledge and that kind of industry support, that's why we just ask to give back to those that, you know, yeah, seriously. took part in it. Sure. If, if you're going to buy a scope, buy it from Kenzie's, but buy a loophole because they sponsor me. Uh, <laughs> they sell all or sorts US of optics. things. Or Optics. <laughs> we are now into, into sponsor uh, yeah. plugging and mode. And it's gone. Wow. Down. And we've lost it. Dave's like, hey, I gave you a, 
a little bit of now, Come now, on. Now I remember why I, I gave this. you a shot <laughs> and you blew it. No, what, one thing, uh, um, guys, I can hear everyone's stomach rumbling here except for Andy because he had an, another uh, protein shake. I did have a scoop of uh, awesome tasting protein that tied me over because I was getting a little, what did I'm you call it, Snickers? Hangry. Hangry. I was yep. just getting hangry. a little hangry. So before we, uh, before we part here, if someone is out there listening to this and they're like, yeah, I want to – Go into that next inner circle of the seas that we were talking, that we were talking about, of the uh, the concentric sea circles that I'll put the uh, the diagram up on the. the it's really tough. Website. The it's inner three circles sanctum. and there's three seas. Yeah, it's but it, but it's I made a lot of cool notes. So. Awesome. I, I, awesome. Anyway, yeah. What what can they expect from a class from a, a three day tactical performance center class put on by Craig and Brian and Andy? I think in the simplest terms, that that we can put or that I can put it in is what they can do is come and expect to have some good foundational skills built. Not only have those foundational skills built, but be given a tool to practice those skills and be given a tool to evaluate those skills. So that when they go home and practice, they actually can make some improvements. Not just the improvements two weeks or a month out of that class, but six months and a year out of that class, they can continue the improvement that they learned, that they, they built in the class. I think that's one of the big different things that we tried to give in this class than classes that we've experienced ourselves elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I've, w I've walked away from a class and been a little bit better for a couple of months, made some gains, and maybe that, that, that gain was consistent for the rest of my shooting period, but I was never able to take it again. I would have had to go back to another class to make the next jump and to make the next jump. Yeah. I was never able to make myself have a tool to make myself better. And I, th I think that's something that they can expect to take away from this is an ability to help themselves when they're back home on their schedule within their resources. The the best testament to this is actually um, Andy. Andy is actually <laughs> coming off of he, – he took a class here, and he took that, went home, and built spreadsheets and worked on it. No, I, it, it I, I consider – I don't do want that. to toot my own horn, but yeah. I consider myself a pretty good student, right? When I come to a class, I'm taking a lot of notes – and I go home and into the hotel room and I like expand upon the notes like the night after. Craig, big surprise. Yeah. No, I was gonna say he actually puts them in a spreadsheet. <laughs> Probably. And the circle is now complete. No. Right. So my cliff notes I take in class. I go home. I expand them on them that night. And then when I go home, I really kind of formalize them and I work them into my practice routine. Right. That kind of thing. But that's what I'm gonna say. You're gonna expect three guys opening up their playbook, opening up their brains. Like 100%, you can see everything we're doing, thinking, and where we've come up with our systems and that kind of thing. No secrets, right? And yeah. then hopefully the student can take that stuff home. You're not going to master this stuff in class, right? But you can see it. We're going we're gonna to show it to you. This is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. And this is how you can do it. And then take notes. You've got the whole playbook. Go home. And it's just at that point, it is how much work and effort and dedication you put into the sport. You know, those concentric circles, we've opened the gate, and then, then it's up to you how far you want to take it. That's awesome. Andy, I think that's a that's a great final thought. And, uh, you know, if people are looking to get into the class, tacticalperformance.com. I'll put all the uh, links in the show notes at threegunshow.com. Gentlemen, thank you so much for taking an extra hour here to, to sit with us <laughs> and uh, be on the podcast. And uh, I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for everything you did for me uh, over the last three days. Well, it's been hey, great. Hey, you guys out there, one thing. I, I'm going to add something. Um, this is a part of a sticking around is a testament to what Dave's doing, uh, at least for me personally. Um, not only is he giving you guys a good outlet for this sport, he's supporting us quite a bit. And he's putting in the extra time, too. He brought all his gear to do a podcast. He brought all his gear to record stuff from the, the class for you guys. And... Um, I'm just grateful of, of what you've been doing and what you've accomplished with the Three Gun Show and, and want to see it keep going. So, um, thanks, man. Thanks a lot for that. Thank Absolutely. you. Likewise, brother. And, and it's an excellent thanks. resource to go. I listen to it to get better because I listen to other people who are doing things differently and I learn different styles. So that's just kind of a, a, a really cool tool that even if I listen to it in the background on my, on my truck while I'm driving to the range, I'm learning something. Oh, Kalani does it that way. Craig does it that way. Andy has a spreadsheet of this. <laughs> Maybe I should pay attention to that when I practice here. So, you seriously. You guys are awesome. Anaconda. 
<laughs> That's a conclusion for Boot Camp Anaconda. There you go. So. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave. I hope you enjoyed that interview and the rundown of the TPC's multi-gun boot camp with Andy, Brian, and Craig. This class seriously rocked, and there there were so many light bulb moments from start to finish, and the, the feedback from the instructors on the stages was incredibly valuable. It, I, I can't say enough about it. If you're looking for high-quality instruction yourself, you should definitely check it out. Again, links to everything we discussed, including the generous sponsors of the prize table at the class. Seriously, a prize table at a class. <laughs> I, I was not expecting it. It was, it was a pretty cool surprise. So... Check those sponsors out and uh, links to the TPC and everything at 3gunshow.com slash episode 65. And don't forget to sign up for the March giveaway. MGM Targets has generously put up one of their 10-inch Sportsman's Targets to give away to one lucky listener of the 3 Gun Show for the month of March. For details and how to enter, go to 3gunshow.com slash MGM. A big 3 Gun Show high five to the staff at the TPC, Ken, Dave, Sam, all made the uh, the weekend awesome, a- as well as all the other students. You know, a, l- a lot of the students are listeners, and hopefully we'll uh, convert the others as well. So, what's up, guys? Thanks for making the weekend awesome. And, uh, and everyone else, thank you so much for downloading, listening, and subscribing to the show. I'll catch you in the next episode. Unload show clear. Okay, you guys, uh, you guys ready? Let's rock and roll. Here we All are. Right. On so KZ before one hundred and one, before we start, I think we'll just uh, we're just going to talk about like the class, like a little bit of a a wrap up. I'm going to basically establish like where we're at, what we're doing. Okay. And then uh, I've been listening to your podcast, so do you want to do me a big clap? I hear you're real good. That's oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, it'll help with the uh, syncing the audio for that thing. Just just clap. I don't have to count three, two, one because we're not syncing. No, just no, me no. clapping. Just right? do it here. Yeah, so we can. Can you do it louder? Thank you. Perfect. Just That's once. all you need? Okay. I just need one. <laughs> all right. <laughs> just one good one. <laughs> one like and two now and you're three it up. and four. <laughs> you messed it all up, Andy. That, that's what he was – do you listen to his podcast too? No. no. Nobody, nobody. Oh, I God. think you might well, be the only I, one. Well, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have, but I don't I don't recall a, a – You have a podcast? Did they, did they not take that out? No, he left it in as like a bonus little LOL type thing. Okay. That one time when you were not synced up with everyone else. So it's the Paracast. Steve asked me to be on. Or not Steve. Uh, oh, I did. Tom. Yeah, I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, Tom and then Steve Kosky and sometimes Leo will jump on. And so we just kind of, it's just banter. But to sync up the audio, we do like three, two, one, clap. Three, two, one, clap. It's Are you guys recording like uh, in, on we different record, channels? We, we just record on phones. Oh, but you're the, kidding. S- the Skype has got a delay. Right. So we do a three, two, one clap. And oh, so and he, he just syncs, syncs everybody's later? phone claps up, and that should be good, right? Ugh. It's weird. That sounds terrible. Yeah. That sounds um, odd. It's also not, not, not odd, and j- just in like just a weird connected way. This is where Dave's going to shit on the podcast. Go no, ahead, no, no. Dave. Yeah. I want to I say the best piece of, uh, of audio that I've heard so far is Steve Kosky. Running to grab his timer and then program it and figure out all the functions on the <laughs> podcast. Like this, this is good pod right here. <laughs> Koski's a, you, a man, different cat. Yeah. Uh, Hold on, paper. I don't know. Send, send me, yeah. send me a link to it or tell me where it's at because I would, I would love to listen to Koski. It's Dude, it, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, I've been listening to Koski for a long time because I used to listen to the Gun Dudes and and Tom Nelson too. And yeah, it's it's hilarious because Tom's like giving Koski a hard time because he knows the timer. Better than than Koski does, right? And he just loves to jab anything he can at Koski. And Koski's like, "Really, you can do that?" And and Tom's like, "Don't go get the timer right now." And then you hear like, thump, 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 thump. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, he's "Getting the timer." He doesn't swear, but and then yes. he comes back and he's like, "Okay, so I'm looking at it, and it's like, God dang it!" 
Oh, yeah. I was laughing my ass off. I, I, was wasn't cool. a Koski that used his car for a prop in a three-gun match and somebody shot a hole in the damn thing? <laughs> Is that I right? Think Through the trunk, right? He, he set it up to like one of the dump, like the gun dumper, the start for the rifle was in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he got pissed and it was like, what, the, what did you expect? 